In the Verse Valley, guardians of poetry you shall soon become. We've arrived at the Temple of Poetry in Verse Valley, where poets from all across the land gather to weave their words. Only, it's oddly quiet here. We haven't seen anyone around. This place looks almost abandoned. Oh, what was that? I thought I saw... You think someone's watching us? Hmm, let's explore this place further. Along the way, we'll attempt to understand what poetry really means and look ahead at our journey through Verse Valley. There it is again. I don't think we're alone here, but we may yet be able to find out what's going on here at the Temple of Poetry. this place would be filled with poet monks writing beautiful poems, but it's empty in here. Silent. Wait, no way! Written about our adventures? Show me. Check it out. Mia found three pieces of writing in the temple, but these writings look so different from each other. This is the temple of poetry, so at least one of them must be a poem. Which one do you think is a poem and why? Pause the video here to read or listen to each one. Then write down your thoughts in your PDF. You might have noticed some of those pieces of writing used rhyming words, or a structured format, or vivid vocabulary. But which one is the poem? Actually, I think all three are examples of poems. Then what do these poems have in common? I'm noticing sometimes poetry rhymes, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it follows a specific format, but sometimes it doesn't. What even is poetry? Well, according to famous poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge, poetry can be defined as the best words in the best order. But what do you think he might have meant by that? Pause the video to write down your thoughts on this quote, then resume. So what did Mr. Coleridge mean? Well, you've probably noticed that compared to narrative writing, like novels, poems tend to be a lot shorter. That's why Coleridge said poets need the best words. When you're only using a few words, you need to choose them carefully. And what about the best order? You might have noticed that poems are structured carefully and don't always follow typical rules of grammar, punctuation, and formatting. Poets may play with text in unusual ways, or they may follow clear structures, but they're always intentional about where and how they place words on the page. So clearly poetry does way more than just communicate information. Essentially, poetry is a type of literary work that uses the sound and form of language to evoke emotion, depth, and meaning. Let's break that definition down a bit. When we say the sound of language, this often includes its musical qualities. How do you think music and language might be related? Well, musicians use carefully chosen notes and melodies to make us feel specific emotions, right? Even songs without words can make us feel excited, sad, thoughtful, and so on. Poets, on the other hand, use words instead of instruments. Words chosen for their sound as well as their meaning. Whether that's a soft sound like whisper or a harsh sound like punch. Poetry also creates unique sounds using techniques like rhythm and rhyme. It's almost like a poem has its own musical soundtrack. Our definition tells us that poetry also relies on the form of language. Hmm. Take a look at our example poems again. What do you think we mean by form? Well, we can see that poems come in a wide variety of forms and structures. Think about narrative writing like novels. 
While the plots and characters are very different, the forms of sentences, paragraphs, and pages are all generally the same. Not so with poetry. Poetry can take many forms, each of which affects our reading experience in a different way. It's kind of like how movies use different camera angles or paintings use different colors to create certain emotions in their audience. In the same way, poems use the placement of words, punctuation, and white space on the page to affect the reader. There are even poems written into shapes. Some poems keep a tempo, like stomping your own feet. To read them is like chanting or marching to a beat. Others are more meandering and slow, with well-timed pauses to think and to know. There are so many kinds of poetry. Throughout this unit, we'll get the chance to learn about a wide variety of poetic styles and techniques. That is, if we can figure out what's going on here. Friend or foe, how shall I know? Oh, hi. We're friends, definitely friends. I'm Caroline. This is Mia. Who are you? Who are you? I am Haiku, a monk of the Temple of Poetry. But, oh, what in the weird world rhymes with poetry? Um, poetry, poetry. <laughs> Cup of tea, really, Mia? I, I don't think. Uh, never mind that. <laughs> What's going on here, Haiku? Why is the temple abandoned? <clears throat> Once brimming with creative light, this temple is no longer bright. Our stanzas and lines and rhythms and rhymes have faded out into the night. Wow, that sounds not good. But why did your poems fade? Poet guardians numbering ten o'er the valleys were traveling when each fell into slumber, their powers awry. Must this be our valley's poetic goodbye? So, ten poet guardians give this place its poetic power, and they've all fallen into some kind of deep sleep. Without them, the valley's poetry is slowly being forgotten. Then, Mia, we have got to find them and wake them up. Oh, please do, would you? You too? Don't worry, Haiku. We've got you. It's true. Sounds like we're going on a poetic quest across Verse Valley, seeking ten poet guardians to awaken them and restore their power to the land. We'll need to become experts in figurative language, including imagery, metaphor, personification, hyperbole, and alliteration. We'll also need to closely study the fundamentals of poetic structure. The last three guardians each hold the power of a specific type of poetry ballad, lyric, and spoken word. And we'll learn to write those types of poetry ourselves. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Next time, Haiku said she'd like to take us on a very special hiking trip. I figure it'll be pretty cool. Until then, every story is a new horizon. See you next time.